Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life and welcome to another Wentworth review. Now, in today's video, I am going to be reviewing Season 1, Episode 4, The Things We Do. But before we get started, if you're not already subscribed, then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all future updates. Okay, so this episode concentrates on Liz's backstory. The episode begins with a few of the women rehearsing their speeches for the Our Journey event, which is basically a big PR event that Erica Davidson has organised to show the press and the public the changes that she has made in Wentworth. And Erica, she has put all of her trust into Liz in organising the women who are doing the speeches. Now, Liz learns from her key worker that her parole is going to be taking place in about two weeks time. And this throws throws Liz into a little bit of a fizz like she wasn't expecting her parole meeting to be happening that soon and this is where we learn that Liz is an alcoholic. Okay so let's talk about Liz's whole flashback journey in this episode. So Liz has two children Sophie and Artie who are young kids in this flashback and something awful happens after Liz gets drunk. Now Artie he ends up finding a soft drink bottle that Liz has hidden around the house and he basically drinks out of it not realizing that there's actually alcohol in there and Artie ends up collapsing now luckily Artie ends up okay and this isn't what Liz goes to prison for oh no Liz does something on an epic level okay so we have Celeste who is Liz's mother-in-law and Ollie Liz's husband or partner I'm not sure which one but Ollie is, de is definitely the father of Liz's children anyway Celeste Celeste wants Liz to organise a party, which Liz seems quite happy to do. However, when the windy weather starts getting in the way of this garden party, Liz starts to panic because Celeste's friends, they're posh and apparently they're snobby. Liz then starts drinking and her partner Ollie basically tells Liz that she is a failure and Liz just gets drunk and completely loses it in spectacular fashion. Now, Liz is she ends up jumping in a tractor as you do and she starts driving all over the tables and the chairs that she's put together for the party but she doesn't realize that daughter Sophie is running to try and stop her and then Celeste chases Sophie. We then hear Liz run over someone and when Liz stops the tractor and looks over in the distance she has literally just mowed down and killed Celeste. This is why Liz ended up in prison all those years ago and I believe Liz was charged with manslaughter when she pleaded guilty. We learn that Liz has fallen off the wagon a few times while she's in prison but she's now currently off the booze for around 18 months. Going slightly off topic now but do you guys remember that character from episode 1 called Ronnie? You know the one who gave Mr. Tabacula a gobby in the back of the van. Well she is having a visit her today from her little girl Amy and her sister called Amanda and I did have to check that one out on the internet movie database. Anyway, the woman who plays Amanda, you know, the actress Carla Bonner, she will always be Steph to me in Neighbours. Anyway, they come in to visit Ronnie but things take a disgustingly horrible turn. Ronnie and her sister are using daughter Amy as a drug mule for heroin which is just vile. When Manda takes Amy to the toilet to get the gear out of her, Amy tells Manda that she didn't eat the chocolate. Now, the thing that I got from this scene was the fact that, you know, the chocolate was actually laxative that would have helped the heroin to go through Amy's body and out through her poop. Anyway, Amy didn't eat this chocolate, so Manda quickly takes Amy back to Ronnie and tells her the news. All of a sudden, Amy ends up collapsing on the floor in the visitor's room because the heroin has obviously burst inside her. Will and Vera try to help Amy and Ronnie admits that she was supposed to shit the stuff out and reveals that it was heroin. Ronnie is then taken away and in a later scene, Ronnie is taken through 
the yard where all of the women are literally baying for her blood. Anyone who does things like that to children is a no-no and the women literally want to lynch Ronnie for what she's done. We later learn that Ronnie is placed into protection for the remainder of her sentence. Such a grim story that isn't very pleasant to talk about, but thank God that this is just fiction. We do later learn from Erica that Amy did indeed survive. We learn from some of the women that Ronnie apparently was forced to use her daughter Amy as a drugs meal by Jax. And when B asks the women why doesn't anyone do anything about it, Liz tells B that normal rules don't apply to Jax. Now, I can remember when I first saw this very moment, I can remember thinking, wow, Jax really is one evil bitch. And I just knew that this was just the start with Jax. There, and there's also like a really cool scene that I just love in the laundry where it looks like that B is about to challenge Jax about the Ronnie and daughter situation. And I mean, for a moment there, B has got her angry eyes on and I just flipping love it. I honestly thought B was going to attack Jax in this scene, but Jax just ends up summoning B to go to her cell later on and this sends B into a little bit of a panic. However, Jax just wants B to do her hair because Jax's husband Vinny Holt has basically just been released from prison. Now, while B is doing Jax's hair, Jax tells B that she would never force another woman to use a child to bring in drugs, but this just does not ring true with me. Jax would say anything. Now, Jax and B, they have like a really cool conversation during this scene where Jax is talking about anger and how you should always be, you know, able to follow things through because this is prison. Prison is a different world. Just before Vinny visits it's Jax in Wentworth, a TV report comes on and it shows Vinny making a statement and he then walks off with a very attractive blonde woman with his arm around her. And this really, really annoys Jax because all of the women in the prison, they're all watching this news report in their units. Now, there is an absolutely hilarious scene where Vera has to do the strip search with Jax. In fact, I don't know how I missed this one when I did my season one ranking video because this is comedy gold at its finest. So Vera is doing this strip search and Jax isn't really being that cooperative because she's just had her hair done. Jax then goes on to like taunt Vera, saying things like, you really should make more of an effort. You could be quite attractive. Vera then just tells Jax to bend over and part her cheeks. Now, as Jax does this, Vera literally bends down to take a good look and Jax then lets out this massive fart. Oh my god. Vera's face is so hilarious like she doesn't know what to do. I can remember when I first saw this I wasn't sure whether if this was actually a blooper that they kept in because Kate Atkinson who plays Vera she literally looks like she's trying to hold her laugh in during this scene. It's absolutely hilarious. Oh while we're talking about Vera she's apparently got a body boyfriend called Adam who never lets Vera out to socialize with her friends. They're always doing something. However, nobody has ever seen this Adam before, but oh god, more will be revealed on Adam during Vera's episode. Let's talk about the Our Journey event. So the women, they do all of their speeches, but Liz, she ends up getting a little bit of cold feet and she leaves the room. Now, I've just got to say, I loved Boomer's little speech during this episode. So she, she tells us about her bad temper, but Frankie has taught her a little trick. When she gets mad, she thinks about cute little puppies bouncing around in jelly, which is just adorable. I can remember after seeing Boomer's speech for the first time, I really like, I really wanted her to become more of a regular because when I first saw Boomer in the very first episode, I thought she was terrifying, but I also thought she was just this background character. And after this episode, I just loved her and I just loved seeing this other side to Boomer. Anyway, back to Liz. So. Boomer, she's been making some home brew and Liz knows where it's hidden. So when Liz leaves the Our Journey event, because she's, you know, panicking, she goes straight to the booze and she gets drunk. She then comes back to the event and she decides to make a speech where 
she basically starts telling one of the guys in the audience that oh he's a bit of all right and all he needs is like 10 minutes in her wet cell erica then tells the officers to take liz away but liz then announces about women who stuff drugs up their kids bums and this is in front of the press and everyone and it's all ruined erica's pissed off Channing's pissed off and Liz she has just ruined her chance of parole which I think was done deliberately I can remember when I first saw it I think Liz was really scared about going back to the outside world and I always felt that Liz you know she self-sabotaged her parole on purpose what do you guys think let me know in the comments box below let's talk about Will he is still annoyed that the police haven't found anything on Meg's murder yet he even goes to Frankie and basically just asks her what does she know and Frankie turns around and says what makes you think it was one of us Ooh, the plot thickens now when I first was watching season one I had it in my head that it was probably Erica who killed Meg and I was glued to this storyline all the way through now during this episode Will he keeps going back through like old prison CCTV footage to see if he can piece any clues together of Meg's final day and he comes across some footage of Fletcher and Meg having a little bit of a disagreement in the car park at least that's what it looks like to Will when Will and Fletch go clubbing he confronts him about it with the footage and Fletch just says that it was nothing it was just Meg undermining him as usual however there is a lot more to this we also get a little sex scene with Will and some random woman in the club where Will is shagging her up against the wall in the club toilet and we are treated to a topless Will and a little bit of bum which is always quite nice to see. However, when the woman asks Will to kiss her, he starts to break down and he basically tells her to fuck off and leave and Will, he's definitely on this dark path at the moment which it, with his partying and his sleeping around and of course we've seen in previous episodes that he likes to indulge in sniffy things. Can anyone help Will before it's too late? Oh, I hope so. So this was a full packed episode with lots going on, plenty of storylines in the mix and I loved every single moment of it. My favourite part of this episode was definitely Boomer's speech and Mr. Jackson's bum. <laughs> and my least favourite moment would have to be Ronnie's daughter collapsing in that visitor's room. Things are heating up very nicely and I have a feeling that Jax, she's going to start coming unstuck very soon. We just need that angry version of B. Smith to make an appearance. So guys, that's all of my thoughts on this week's episode. Now, I want to hear all of your thoughts. What were your first impressions on this episode when you first saw it let me know everything in the comments box below okay then guys well that's all i have for you today but fear not more wentworth content is coming very very soon so make sure you've smashed that subscribe button stay safe out there and i will see you all again very soon bye guys